Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question here if you're new, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I am not so sure. And today we're going to do the year 2009. I've been doing the entire 2000s, uh, 30 favorite album series. Hey, kitty. Shh. My cat. He hadn't made a noise till I turned on record, right? What What is it about them? But uh, anyhow, um, this is it. We're wrapping up the 2000s. We've done uh, several episodes over the last 14 months. And, and I keep forgetting to tell you guys, I have playlists on Spotify. So I have uh, a playlist of 30 favorite albums from 2009, just the highlights, or it would be way too long of a list i take about a quarter third of each album and then i also created a new playlist which is i took my top tens from 2000 through through 2009 and made a list of 100 favorite albums of the entire decade just one song each so it's a pretty quick playlist and merle haggard is not available on uh spotify so it's 99 songs um and one or two of them are, are blacked out because they're not. Uh, so it's maybe 97, 98 songs, but it's a great playlist. I hope you enjoy it. So let's get right into the uh, thing here. Let me pull up my spreadsheet. This is the top 10. Very excited about this. Uh, some of these bands I've seen in concert, so I'll talk about those. But the last thing I'll say is that some of these albums did not get some good reviews but i i like them and so i'm gonna have to defend i guess why i like them but coming in at number 10 from uh eastern molly the birthplace of the blues is western molly but this is a tuareg band desert nomads from eastern molly up against the libyan border and this is tanari one a band i've seen two times in concert a midi one also known as companions and this is fantastic stuff so this is their uh, i think this is their third album and i'm just a huge fan of this mid-tempo desert blues great stuff uh yeah i, I was going to say western africa which it is but it's almost really over in eastern mali you're talking saharan desert and Anyway, because of the war in Mali, they uh, relocated to the United States, and they love the Southwest because it's it's hot and there's desert. So they came through town. Uh, through I'm from Arizona. They came through quite a few times, and I saw them once in Tucson and once in Phoenix. And they're just a great, great, uh, great band. Uh, so if you haven't heard them, check them out. Uh, yeah, they say everything's kind of mid-tempo. It's guitars, percussion, and hand claps. And this, I think this is the last album they did where they still had female singers in the band. They eventually moved to a all-male band, and the two times I saw them, they were just guys. All right, coming at number nine is, uh, is kind of an interesting album because I listened to it a long time ago. And it didn't make much of an impact on me. And then I uh, played it again recently in the last year and just fell in love with it. And this seems to be the story of this album. It was a slow burner. It didn't make a big impact coming out. But over several years, it eventually sold a million copies. And this is the XX. I'm going to pause this video real quick and put my cat away. Hang on. Okay. I'm I'm back. We're we're going live, and uh, that's the thing about pets, right? Animals, they just uh, they're on their own agenda. So, anyway, the XX with um, uh, uh, you know, I did a the the video I did was crystallized, and it was great. And I've listened to this album many times, and I prefer it a little bit at night. But Romy and Jamie are just wonderful vocals, and there's a, an immediacy. It's like they're in the room when you listen to this album. It's so intimate and well-produced and well-engineered. It's, it's just wonderful. And it's hard for me to pick a favorite song on here because I just like the whole album all the way through. So 
Yeah, and and this was pretty universally acclaimed. So five stars on all music, 87 on Metacritic, 8.7 Pitchfork. Yeah, yeah, it did real well. It was real high up on Rate Your Music, too. I don't have the exact number here, but yeah, everybody pretty much loves this album, and I agree. All right, number eight is an album that got very mixed reviews. Pitchfork only gave it a 5.7, said it was kind of a mess. This is the Decemberists, The Hazards of Love. And this is way over the top. This is a messy story. <laughs> and it's uh, just full of this uh, mythology that Colin wrote. And yeah, it can be a little hard to follow, but the more I listen to it, the more I fall in love with it. I think if you dismiss this album for being a little uh, messy, you have to throw out half of progressive rock. I mean, you listened, you ever tried to follow the story on uh, an album like Brain Salad Surgery? I mean, I think the lyrics are better on this album. And I love the guest vocalists, especially Becky Stark as the character of Margaret. This just really adds to the album. And yeah, it's. I agree with Wikipedia. They borrow a lot from Led Zeppelin and Fairport Convention. So, you know, they wear their influences on their sleeve. And yeah, it's really, it's pretentious as hell. <laughs> but again, so is half a prog rock. You listen to Yes or, or any of those bands or, or Genesis. And uh, well, Genesis was pretty smart, but... Yeah, you listen to um, uh, some albums like Close to the Edge and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I love this sort of neo prog folk thing that the Decemberists do. They're from Portland, Oregon, but they sound like they're from Europe. And I love them. Metacritic gave it a 73, All Music 4. So, you know, they got mixed reviews, but I love it. All right, number seven is a band I think doesn't get enough love just doesn't get enough love and that's meat puppets sewn together i've seen the meat puppets eight times in concert and there is a bit of a backstory i went to grade school with um kurt and i guess chris but chris was in a different grade so i didn't know him but yeah i was in fifth grade with um uh kurt we were in the same class and the last time I saw him was at the Spinal Tap concert. Yeah, believe it or not, Spinal Tap did a tour, and we bumped into each other there. That was a long time ago. But, you know, this album, I'm going to pull up Wikipedia because there's just a, a little thing that uh, I want to read from the Boston Globe because um, it's better. It's just more eloquent than me. It says, at its best, Arizona's Meat Puppets make you think there are no boundaries between punk, country, and pop. The appropriately, the appropriately named Sewn Together finds 50-year-old Kirk Kirkwood and his 48-year-old brother Chris Kirkwood crafting mongrel music as fine as anything in the band's catalog. The group's signatures are all here. The loping honky-tonk rhythms, the piercing punk wordplay, and the psychedelic glint that makes even the mellowest passages sound a little nervous. Isn't that great? I just uh, I just love this album. It sounds so good, and it's kind of harkens back. So now this does have Ted Marcus on drums, uh, not uh, Derek Bostrom. So it's uh, kind of one of their interim lineups. They're now uh, performing with the original lineup, but uh, I I think this is just great stuff. And there's a lot of extra instrumentation on here, banjo, and you know different things that. You didn't hear in the old days but yeah it's just it sewn together all these instruments and i don't think it gets enough love all music gave it three and a half metacritic 71 pitchfork 6.1 it wasn't even in the top 1000 on rate your music but i would beg you to <laughs> to listen to this and have a different opinion it's uh great stuff and the fact that i um know one of the members got nothing to do with it i didn't even know he had a band until I read about them in Rolling Stone. So there's nothing personal. It's just, uh, they're just one of the great bands. And, and I think the reason they got poor reviews, and then I'll wrap this uh, review up, 
is that people always compare works to the older material. And I don't think that's fair. I think you take an album as a standalone. So if this was a debut album and they had never recorded anything before, I think people would have a higher opinion of it. All right. Coming in number six, the other band I've seen eight times in concert, U2, No Line on the Horizon. So, man, this really split people. Uh, I, I did a, a video on No Moment of Surrender. It performed really well. Thank you, guys. And, yeah, this is um, this is probably going to be the last U2 album um, to make my top 30, but I keep saying that. And But this, this was a last really great album, and here's here's the divided critics. Are you ready for this? Three and a half on all music, 72 on Metacritic, 4.2 on Pitchfork. That's out of 10. And rate your music, which hates you two, didn't even rate it. Uh, they've got a couple bands on there that they're very prejudiced against. And one is U2. U2, except for the Joshua Tree and maybe Octune Baby, just never makes their lists. However, Blender... Q out of England and Rolling Stone, those three magazines all gave it five stars. So nobody could agree on this. But yeah, great. Not every track is um, a 5.0 track, but it's a very strong album and well played is always one of the best rhythm sections. And if you don't like U2, I get it. I understand. But uh, just a band that I, I really love. And they had a, a couple home runs in the 21st century. All right. Number five. This is an album. This is an artist that I knew, but not an album that I knew. And I think I've said before that in 2009, I went back to school and I was busy studying the entire year for a nursing license. And I worked my butt off in that class and didn't really have time to listen to music. So I did not listen to Nico Case's Middle Cyclone. What a great album coming in at number five. She has a voice that I just love. And they call this alt country and she's on the anti record label, anti with a little hyphen at the end. But I don't know. I don't really consider her country. Uh, just the titles on here, This Tornado Loves You, <laughs> people got a lot of nerve. Yeah, these are great titles that really kind of hint at more of an indie rock artist. But yeah, indie rock artists with alt-country leanings, you probably know Nico Case. Uh, the album got decent reviews. Um, it didn't knock people out of the park, but... I like every song on this album. I, I have a hard time picking a favorite. Maybe the opening track, This Tornado Loves You, but there's just an immediacy to her voice and a tone, her tone and her timber. Just love, just love her voice. All right. Coming in number four, and I am trying to move this video along uh, a little bit, make it a little bit shorter. Uh, number four, Nirvana live at reading so this was recorded in august of 92 and 14 months later in october of 93 i i saw them on tour and it was a great show for half the show and then he, he blew his voice out so he had to bring it down a notch but the first dozen songs were great before he blew his voice out and this is with a cello player and the extra, was it Pat Smear? Was that the guy that was with them? So they were, uh, I think, a five-piece um, in utero tour. And yeah, so every yeah everyone pretty much loved this. Five stars on all music, 93 on Metacritic, 9.5 on Pitchfork. So, you know, everybody loved this album. But for me, not only is it objectively a great album, but it's also a, a bit of a memoir of the concert. So even though there was a year uh, apart, they did many of the same songs. I, in fact, I just looked at the set list before I um, hit record here and 23 songs that they did, um, many of them 
overlapped with this recording uh, and it sounds great yeah and i also like the the video which i watched on youtube a couple times i don't i don't own the dvd but fantastic fantastic nirvana live uh gotta love it so you guys know it you guys love it <laughs> number three the final album from sonic youth the eternal and they never did another album again after this. And uh, this one, too, I wanted to um, uh, bring up just real quick here on um, Wikipedia. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's um, Well, I had something on here I was going to uh, do, but I can't. Oh, I know. I was just going to talk about my favorite songs. So it's hard for me to remember all the song titles. but. Sacred Trickster, Anti-Orgasm, Antenna, What We Know. That's a really good uh, Lee Ronaldo song. And um, Massage the History. So not every song is great on here. I think, you know, for example, Thunderclap for Bobby Penn or Malibu Gas Station. Not, not 5.01s, but, uh, you know, not the best tracks on here. but. I don't know. I just love Sonic Youth. And one of the guys uh, in the comments predicted that I would have this on here. And yeah, you're right. Uh, I've always loved Sonic Youth, but they're one of the best 21st century bands. I love uh, everything from Murray Street on. Uh, this is probably my least favorite of their last four albums, but still great and strong enough to make number three on this list and yeah so then i guess uh thurston moore i guess he had an affair or something and their marriage broke up and so that broke up the band and but that's okay because because <laughs> they had a pretty damn good legacy and they ended on a on a, a what i think is a strong strong album so let's see the reviews on that were pitchfork only gave it a 6.8 but um yeah, most people like this album. Hey, number two, a band you know that I like uh, and I did get to see one time in concert is Wilco. Wilco, the album. Now, I didn't think this was going to rank that high, but, you know, just those songs like Bull Black Nova and One Wing and Wilco, the song. Uh, so many um, great, great. Oh, I'll Fight. Ah, that's a great song. So I love this. This was recorded in New Zealand, which is kind of odd for them. Uh, at, uh, I think, Neil Finn's studio of Crowded House. So you don't think of Crowded House and Wilco in the same breath. Uh, this got good reviews, not great reviews. Like, you know, Pitchfork gave it a 7.3. But I really like this album and I don't know, Wilco just keeps hitting mostly home runs in the 21st century. Um, I'm not super familiar with their last couple albums, which are a little more acoustic. In fact, I haven't listened to the new one at all because I want to react to it. So there you go. But uh, Wilco, the album. So number one is probably going to really surprise you guys. Somebody I like so much, I went to see him at a club. Are you ready? You... If you're trying to guess my favorite album, I put money that you did not see this one coming. Bill Callahan, Sometimes I Wish We Were an Eagle. I love this album. And I'm going to put a little snippet of it on the outro so you can hear a little bit of it. He does kind of a sing-speak baritone. Wikipedia calls him alt country, but he's no more alt country than Nico Case is. And these are wonderful songs. Uh, Jim Kane and uh, Faith Void and all these wonderful Too Many Birds. Just wonderful songs. He used to be known as Smog, and then he went with his real uh, name. So he's got a, a long career going back to, I think, the early 90s. But uh, just, it was a great show, great band. And yeah, I don't know how to kind of explain it. It's, uh, that's why I'm going to put a little snippet on the outro. But he's just a great indie rock artist. And I love this guy. And 
I just had to go see him. So when I, by the time I saw him, it was the next album, but uh, yeah, he did many of these songs and just love it. Uh, what's really great about this album, by the way, is he had recorded all the songs and then he went, uh, I think, to South America for a tour. And uh, this person, I don't know their name offhand, but they decided to put strings on all the songs. So they did these little string arrangements and he came back from his tour and it, it was done. It was in the can. He didn't supervise it at all. And those string arrangements absolutely make this album. Uh, they are beautiful, beautiful string arrangements. We're talking, I think, probably a quartet, I'm guessing. I'd have to look at Wikipedia and see all the instruments. But, a, you know, a small orchestra, just a little string section. And they're on virtually every song and fantastic. So that's it. Bill Callahan, sometimes I wish... I, I said sometimes I wish we were an eagle, but I think it's sometimes I wish I were an eagle. I believe that's the correct title. I've got it mistyped here. So that's it. It got um, an 82 on Metacritic, 8.1 Pitchfork, Rate Your Music, number 32 album. And the English press loved this album. I remember that's how I found out about it, was probably through Mojo Magazine. So that's it. Going to wrap up the video if you like what I'm doing. Uh, senior reacting to the new music of the 21st century hit that like or subscribe button and uh, they really helps and remember those spotify playlists and as we say here in uh, bonita mexico buen dia it's time to put god away time.